So good afternoon. Today we're going to be making an announcement on testing in schools to help more students return to the classroom. But first I want to give an update on the Co Commonwealth's COVID-19 numbers. Yesterday the Department of Public Health reported 7,136 new cases. That was on 108,412 new tests and over 11.4 million tests have been administered. 2,386 patients are in the hospital being treated for COVID and 455 patients are in the ICU. We're in daily contact with the Commonwealth's hospitals to make sure that they have enough capacity to treat both COVID and non-COVID patients. I also give a quick update on vaccine distribution. As of the end of the day yesterday, over 345,000 doses of COVID vaccine have been shipped to providers in Massachusetts. 167,084 doses of vaccine have been administered by Massachusetts providers, including over 16,000 doses that have been administered by the federal long-term care program. As a reminder, these numbers are likely higher as there is a delay in the reporting by providers into the state's MIIS system. Phase one of our distribution plan is well underway, and on Monday, vaccination of first responders will begin. Local boards of health have established 119 vaccination sites where first responders can get a vaccine, and the command center is also working to set up several mass vaccination sites, and we'll have more to share on those sites next week. On Monday, vaccinations will also begin for residents and staff at assisted living residences, rest homes, continuing care retirement communities, and congregate care programs through the Federal Pharmacy Partnership Program. And on January 18th, we'll begin vaccinating congregate care settings that are not part of the Federal Pharmacy Partnership Program, and we'll have more to say about that next week. We know that the vaccines can't be administered fast enough and the command center and DPH are working hard with our federal and local partners to vaccinate res residents as quickly and as safely as possible based on the guidance and the rules that we put in place to ensure that vaccines go initially to those populations we consider to be most at risk and most important to our ability to continue to provide health care to people here in the Commonwealth. And we'll obviously continue to keep the public updated as we work through our priority groups. As many people know, in June, we released detailed guidance for schools that were developed by medical experts and by endorsed by the Mass Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics to support safe in-person learning for all students. The Commonwealth also invested nearly $1 billion for schools to cover COVID-related expenses. There's now an overwhelming body of scientific research that shows that in-person learning can be done without spreading the virus, regardless of the community transmission rates. One needs to look no farther than the parochial schools here in the Commonwealth. 30,000 students, 4,000 staff, been open for in-person learning since August, with very limited impact associated with COVID. And most of those schools are located in communities with high transmission rates. It's a great success story, and I applaud them for it. As a result, many districts have been able to bring students back into the classroom. But unfortunately, too many kids remain learning remotely or in complicated hybrid programs. The teams at the Executive Office of Education and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education have worked side by side with the Department of Public Health and the Command Center to help students, help schools get kids back into the classroom. This includes rapid response mobile testing and Abbott by Next Now rapid testing, which began in December in more than 100 school districts. To help our schools bring more kids back, our administration's education and health experts will make weekly COVID-19 pooled testing available to all schools and districts across the Commonwealth within the next month. This is something people have been working on for months. And all of these people up here will have more to say about it in a minute. The data around this is clear that in-person learning is essential to kids' education, developmental, and emotional well-being. And we've shown we can control the spread of the virus in classrooms when the right steps are in place. This new, new pooled testing resource that we're going to be providing going forward will give districts the ability to bring more kids back to the classroom. 
Pool testing increases the number of individuals that can be tested using the same amount of lab resources as a traditional PCR test, and this tool will help schools quickly test students and staff, helping to find and isolate any cases of COVID. Secretary Sutters will share more details on how the pool testing works shortly, and in the coming days, we'll work with school districts that want to participate to bring more kids back to the classroom. Commissioner Riley, who's also with us today, will provide more details about how schools can volunteer to be part of this new testing program. We're grateful for all the hard work that so many of our staff and teachers have put in day in and day out to go above and beyond serving students and their families. And we've asked a lot of folks as we all work together to stop the spread, but children, and especially high-needs children, have borne the brunt of this terrible virus as their lives, routines, and educations have been upended. Pool testing will provide additional safeguards to stop the spread and give students, parents, teachers, and staff confidence that it is safe to be in schools. And this new testing will give school officials more knowledge about what's happening inside their buildings every day. There's no doubt the virus will be with us for a while. And while there's a light at the end of the tunnel, associated with the rollout of vaccines. We can't wait for everybody to be vaccinated before our kids get back to school. We look forward to working with everybody to implement this initiative.